What's up, y'all? <clears throat> Y'all doing to Dizzy? Hey, Miss Moore. How you doing? What's up, everybody? How y'all doing today? Y'all doing all right? JD, what to do? What's happening? Brother JD, my boy, I see you in a minute, bro. What's good? How the real estate going, boss? Anthony should have got a um, request. I had to join you, bring you onto the live. Make sure I got that. All right, that is accept. What's up with everybody, man? How y'all doing today? What's good with y'all? No answer from the live guest. Mr. Moore. Can't bring in my camera. Okay, let me try this. Let me try this. I'm again. Let me see. I'm going to try and put it back on. Let this work this time. What's going on, y'all? There we go. You hear me? We good? I can hear you. I can hear you. You good? Yeah, yeah I got you. I hear you. All right. So, as y'all know how this art and talk show goes, I'm going to be doing a lot of the, the art, and he will, do, he will be doing the majority of the talking. Well, of course, I'll be conversing back and forth. But uh, so, yeah. And also, when it comes to questions, we will answer all the questions at the end um, via the comments. All right. We'll, we'll comment after the videos ended up being uploaded. All right. Just to, for the sake of time. Cool. So, um, Mr. Moore, I'll let you go and just, you know, take it off because, you know, you, you, you're good on introducing yourself. What's going on? So I'm getting set up. So go ahead, Miss <laughs> All right. So, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Anthony Moore. I am vice president of Teach Them Younger. Uh, I am a half of the brainchild of uh, bringing to the community uh, arts and athletics. Um, we've a uh, small organization. We've been around now about four years. We're going into our fourth year. Uh, we started here in Osceola, uh, very small, working in the school system, uh, helping out with a couple of art programs, uh, trying to provide uh, after-school basketball uh, and basketball training. We were kind of expanding, and you know, we added AC. Welcome, Alvin, to our team, and uh, we're trying to expand, uh, try to expand the art side of what we got going on. Uh, we're also uh, working hard with just being uh, a part of this community, right? We give away a lot of programs. Uh, we, we try to get as many kids as possible involved in athletics, involved in uh, doing well in school. Uh, we have a mentoring. We have a tutoring programs. Uh, we're just trying to be uh, a supportive organization for our community. So... That's who I am. That's a little bit about our organization. Um, I, I know a lot of people will see that as, as time starts going on, uh, one of the things that you will notice about myself and uh, the rest of my team 
as you'll see a lot more of us. Uh, we're really pushing to help this community, uh, again, in any way possible. Uh, so we're here, and, and I'm hoping that uh, coming out and doing events like this and talking with Alvin and you guys seeing me out here in the public, uh, you'll know that we have true, genuine intentions to help as many young people as we can in, in the Osceola area, Kissimmee specifically, and Central Florida overall. Wow. Thank you very much, boss. So, so of course, a lot of people do know you, uh, and some people don't. So for some people who don't, um, kind of elaborate more so, well, actually, let's bring it back. Let's start off with what is it like, because you are a father as well. So what is it like yes. to be coaching, being a father, and, you know, running the, you know, the operations of the nonprofit as well, which we'll get into about teaching younger. But how is that like for you right now, those three things, being a father, vice president, and, you know, coaching at the same time? <laughs> so, uh, Yo, okay, so uh, I'm going to tell you, my, my – the only other person that I've met that, that can compete with my schedule is Alvin. And, and that's just real talk. Um, I'm full speed ahead pretty much all day, every day. Um, I have three kids. Um, I have two 13 year old daughters, 16 year old son. Um, they're all involved in athletics. So I have um, two, I have uh, I'm missing two players, man. I almost got a five here. Um, we are consistent with, uh, how we raise our kids. So we're, I'm very active in my kids' life as far as um, their schoolwork, uh, any other extracurricular activities. I'm down. I support them totally. Um, and basically, that's how Teach Them Younger really started to blossom. You know, uh, people started seeing my support for my kids and how I go to extra mile as much as I can for them, myself and my wife. Uh, and we, we started this to help them. But then it kind of blossomed into helping everyone. And the more that I started using people that I knew, my contacts, um, individuals to come in and talk to my kids to help them get on the straight and narrow, I realized that that help is needed for a lot more kids, right? My kids are very fortunate because they have both their mom and dad in the house, right? So I know that some of the things that I was doing, a lot of kids aren't getting that, uh, not because their parents don't want to, it's just their parents don't have the time to, you know, uh, hustling multiple jobs and, and trying to make ends meet. Trust me, it's understandable. And I understand. So that that's where I, I really try to use this organization and the things that we do to help those parents, to help to help be that support for some of those kids out there. But Alvin, I'm telling you, to, to be honest, it's say about 18 hour day every day, yeah. <laughs> every day, 18, 18, 19, yeah. you know, uh, uh, I'm lucky if I get a good five hours sleep, yeah. you know, uh, we're, we're, we're up early every morning. Mm -hmm. You know, we give away free basketball training right now. We've been giving away for the last few weeks. So every morning at nine o'clock, we're out at the park with the kids. We got everybody. We're practicing our social distancing. Um, everything within the CDC regulations. Yeah. Um, but we got kids out every day working. Um, my kids every morning prior to that, I'm up with them working out, running. So my day is constant, constant, constant. You know, and the good thing about it, though, is I can see that we're actually uh, actually having a positive income or outcome on a lot of lives right now, wow. right? Um, one of the things that our organization, I think that a lot of people are really interested in what we're doing with our organization is really because of our growth, right? Uh, last year, we were we were support. Here, I'll be brief here. I'm going to give you a quick overview of what we got going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last couple of years, we, we've been working with different AAU teams and trying to support those teams. I told you we were working in school systems, trying to support schools. Uh, we were... Uh, working with a lot of the schools over in the Point Siena area, uh, working with uh, COA, Elementary, Discovery, uh, Intermediate over there. Uh, we were trying our hardest to just be a part of what's going on. And so last year, um, after working with probably my third or fourth AAU team, I decided, look, it's time to start 
doing this seriously the way I want to do it, all right? So we decided to really focus on only teach some younger programs. And the push to do that has changed our organization tremendously. Instead of going and helping other people, uh, you know, and don't get me wrong, I'm a full-time big believer in collaboration, right? Collaborating with other organizations, doing as much as possible. It takes a village to raise some children. So uh, I, I'm all in on collaborating. However, I was starting to realize that the collaborations I was in just weren't moving in the right direction that I wanted to move in, weren't moving as fast, you know? And, and so I, I just took it upon myself to take the bull by the horns and go with it. And so this, this past year, I would say the end of 2019, um, we, our growth and our population of all our kids that we brought in, and they were probably about 20 to 30 kids on a regular basis. Uh, and, and I'm being generous. I would say probably about 15 kids on a regular basis. Um, then we made the connection with Kissimmee Christian Church. And having Kissimmee Christian Church and having a location where people knew where we were going to be every week, that like just took us to the next level, right? So every Saturday, people knew that they could come in a gym and I would work them out and we get some good, uh, good work in, uh, good camaraderie. Kids are going to learn and people are really being dedicated to it. And those numbers grew from 20 January to about 45 in February until right before the whole pandemic hit, uh, we were looking at probably about 60 to 70 kids in the gym every Saturday. Uh, meaning we were, we were actually helping and providing support to as many kids one day a week as a lot of these other larger organizations were doing for their entire week. And um, people took notice. And, and not only did people take notice, I think people really started realizing that um, there are other individuals out here in this community that have their kids' best interests in mind. And I, I think that uh, that helped me and gave me a little pub out here in these streets. And um, a lot of parents respect me for it. I kept everything very transparent. And I still do keep everything transparent because it's all about helping these kids get to the next level. I don't care about anything else. And, and AC, you know, I, I say it often. I don't care if you are with an AAU organization I don't care if you play on a school team. I don't care where you, what you do. All I want to do is be a part of making you a better player, making you a better athlete, making you a better student, making you a better choice or candidate for that next level. And, and that, that's my whole thing right now. And, uh, that, and, that's, and, I, and that's why I, I, uh, I commend, I always commend you from, from jump when I first, because the first time I met uh, Coach Moore, was when a friend of mine, Miss Kamisha, she invited me to one of the fundraisers that was right. going on at uh, um, the Abracadabra. Abracadabra. Yeah, Abracadabra. So, right. you know, Abracadabra, if you know about Kissimmee, I can, Abracadabra is right in front of, right by Kissimmee Christian Church. So, um, that we kind of went over at the same, simultaneously with the fundraiser going on at Abracadabra, he had a good 40 to 50 kids of, of people, kids and adults as well, was in the gym. And I'm like, man, this is, one, I didn't even know there's a gym in there. Two, uh, two, it's the fact that they're all in there, they're all having a good time, they're all hanging out, you know, it's all, it's a positive, it's a positive feel. So I think like that, that is what, 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 what is more needed, because I believe that youth development and youth services is more needed in the community, not just by, of course, you know, of course, the city of Kissimmee has their parts of rest um, department, but, you know, that's only two parts or three parts, you feel me, and then you got the YMCA on Dyer, and then you got a Boys and Girls Club, and then, I mean, YMCA on Dacker, and a Boys and Girls Club on Dacker. Dyer. Yeah, so it's like, that the, the it's minimal when it comes to youth services, I think, personally. Um, and I still kind of yeah. that's why I'm like, man, this is needed, but this needs to be even more exposed because of the different services that um, that your that your organization provides. So, um, I guess now we can kind of get into 
more about, you know, what, what teach them younger. Um, already has now you spoke about already what, what it was doing, but I guess what in the entail was gonna happen now in the future for teaching younger and how it's gonna kinda of relate to you know the youth development right now. Very cool. Um all right, so I, I touched upon it earlier about uh, our expansion and our our growth, uh, not only with athletics and how we're we're trying to reach the use with that, but also how we're trying to reach uh, our young people with arts. Uh, so that that next level, uh, we we want to expand on that um, on a couple of different levels, right? Uh, one because there may be opportunity for some kids out here that just don't know how artistic they can be, right? And that's one of the things that I, I really, uh, I, I don't want to say it's, it, we kind of dropped the ball, but over this last year, we didn't really have a lot of our arts programs running. We, we were strictly on athletics. And we were opened up and funded, founded on expanding arts because we feel that enrichment is a part of Athletes, uh, we're students overall, but athletes as well, because there's a lot of athletes that are actually very talented artists, and that you know that that part of their life is not really as publicized as as a lot, except unless they're rapping, making right. beats, or something like right. that. But there's a lot of guys that are are, are like artists, you know. And, and I could tell you, for example, um, a, a guy that I knew, uh, one of my best friends. Uh, Nate Miller. So Nate, he was a he's a football player. He played with uh, where did Nate play? LSU. Nate went to school at LSU. He played with the Falcons a couple of years, and he was very creative with art. He he was a cartoonist. Yeah. And I believe Nate actually ended up creating cartoons, uh, uh, comic books, for um, Atlanta public school system. And, and which I thought was awesome, right? That that's a, a gift that he had that a lot of people didn't even know. You know, they just looked at him as a football player, and, and so uh, I, that to me, I always thought about how that that piece of their life uh, of athlete's life that since a lot of people don't really say, hey, yo, I want to see your art all the time, um, they they rather see you playing football or or slam dunking or basketball. Uh, I want to make that portion of their life a, a little bit easier for them to enrich, uh, for them to actually expand on it. You know, one of the things that AC, you and I talked about was, you know, we have to teach these kids that not all art has to be good. Correct. Right. You, 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 you may create a piece of art that you might not find good, yeah. but hey man, somebody else might go, man, that's amazing. You know, you have to be confident in it. And, you know, and so a lot of the, uh, pieces that we teach, right? Even with athletics, is one of the big portions is just having that confidence, man. That uh, will help these kids all along. Um, so, with, with the expansion of arts and our academics, and and we also with academics. And sorry, I missed that part. Uh, we we provide Florida virtual school support. Uh, we we provide homeschooling support. Uh, we do tutoring. Uh, so we have uh, educators that are on the squad that help out with us. Uh, we have a couple of tutoring services that also are on the squad that help and we partner with. Uh, we, for Teach Them Younger Athletics overall, if you're a part of Teach Them Younger Athletics like AAU teams, uh, one of the, our requirements is a 3.0. So even if you're a part of Teach Them Younger and you're trying to get down with what we're doing and you're working out, you're exercising, you're just getting started, and you don't have a 3.0, we have all the resources to get you up to par. So that, that's a piece of, that we offer um, that I, I don't know how many people do. I'm not worried about them offering it, but I know we offer it, right? We want to make uh, all of our kids uh, next level ready. Uh, so we offer that. So, and so we're looking at our athletics. We want to add arts. We got the uh, education portion of it. And we want to take all three of those and move it under one roof and start offering our services more than just one day a week at the church. Uh, and, and I think that there's a huge market for it since uh, we have a nice little following already. And the more people will start follow, following us, being a part of our programs, um, the bigger we can grow.
So uh, it's just a matter of uh, providing the services for people and offering it. And so that's the next step now is getting it all under one roof so we're not scattered all over town and have a location where kids can feel comfortable coming, um, learning, growing, training, working out, the whole nine. So, so I, I, I'm a t- go, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I, I wanted. I wanted to. Before we move too far away, mm-hmm. I, I want to go back, Alvin, because I, I told you I was going to tell these people how we met. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, and, cool. and so, so I, I want to. I want to. Before we move away from that, I want to tell you guys. So, uh, I also said earlier, I'm really a bit heavy on collaboration, right? Uh, I'm always talking about collaborating. I think that. Uh, the more knowledgeable people you have in a room, the, the, the bigger and the stronger the possibility that some good stuff is gonna come out of that room to help somebody. And so uh, when we were having our fundraiser, uh, Ms. Kamisha did tell me that, uh, she told my wife, uh, Alexandra, that, uh, hey, you wanna talk to a guy, I got a guy, he's actually running for mayor. And uh, it, it, he, I want to bring him down. You introduce yourself, and um, I think it'll be a good fit. You guys should at least just talk to him. And you know, me, I was focused on what was going on across the street because I had all the kids over there. So I'm, I'm running, doing drills and things. And everyone was over at Abracadabra, and my wife texts me and goes, "Hey, if you can come over here, I need you to come over here as soon as possible. I need you to t- meet with uh, this gentleman I just met." Uh, Alvin Codner, um, he's somebody I think you want to talk to. Um, come over. All right, no problem. I come over across the street, jog across Main Street. Um, I walk in and I see Kamisha sitting at the table and I'm walking around, I'm looking, I'm looking. All right, where's this guy I'm supposed to be meeting? Who Who is this? Who's me? And Alvin that day, I don't know where he was previously, but that day he had on like camouflage and uh, a reflective vest, like like a, a construction worker vest, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So you remember Alvin? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you had, you had like a vest. My highlighter green jacket on. <laughs> so, so when I saw him, I was like, yo, this guy? I, I thought this guy was waiting for his order. I thought there was a construction worker in here. I know yeah. this is the guy I was supposed to be talking to, right? This guy, he's sitting over here just chilling, dreads and all. I said, oh, okay. All right, well, let me talk to him. And Im- immediately, I mean, two seconds into our conversation, we click it, right? Um, we talked a little bit there at Abracadabra. I-, I told him, hey, look, man, I got to get back across the street. I got like 40 kids in the gym. Come over there. So he came over to the gym, walked around, looked at what I was doing, um, just looking at the kids playing, the energy, the vibe. I think, you know, after him and I talked and he said it about three or four times, man, the vibe in that room is just ridiculous, man. Those kids and how they react to you is just the energy. And I said, everybody that walks in the gym says the same thing. I, um, if you don't have an excited gym, you ain't going to get kids to want to learn. Right, so look, look at all these other places with gyms and got kids sitting around playing on their phones, right? Wow. We got a gym and I got a full gym of kids and out there, all out there working out. So, but I, I wanted to tell you, it was funny because I was like, nah, there's no way that this is the guy you want me to talk to, you know? <laughs> and then when I started talking to him, you know, don't judge a book by his cover because as soon as I started talking to him, I was like, yo, this is the guy I need. This is the guy I need. The, the, not only is this the guy I need to help me this is a guy I need to start reaching some other people, right? Yeah. And one of the things that Alvin told me off right off rip, hey man, I'm trying to help my city. That's it. Whatever you're trying to do, I'm trying to do as long as you're trying to help my city. And uh, that resonated with me, man. Because even though I'm not, uh, I'm not from here originally, I live here now. My kids live here now. I want all the resources I can for my children, you know? So... Um, I'm trying my hardest to make this hometown, you know what I'm saying? So his energy in saying that, you know, this is town, this is home, you know, uh, I'm doing, I'm down for whatever, that that just brought my energy up. I'm down for whatever too, bro, I hear you. Let, let's go try to help as many kids as we can in this area uh, by any means necessary, and that's how I'm looking at it. Yeah. 
and that, that, that right there is a blessing because I just, you know, I'm big on the youth. I'm so big on the youth, man. So it's like anything with the youth, I'm all for it, not like 10 toes down. Like it doesn't matter. As long as it's positive and it's a youth development, I choose that. Right. If it's for the youth or for the elderly, either one of the two. Like that's, I'm, I'm, I'm for it either or. Like I'll do that for free, volunteer, for whatever. Because that's why when I, when I seen them, I'm like, yeah, this is needed. This needs to be here. This is being. Not only in Kissimmee, but I still the county as a whole. So, but, yeah, uh, you know, I told you, right? We start, we started in Point Siena, and right, you know, right. we we were trying our hardest in, in Point Siena to make things happen. And you know, no no disrespect to the the, the folks down in Point Siena, but it's very difficult to work down there because you know, not having that that city government yeah. to to regulate usage of parks and things like that is difficult over there. Yeah. And uh, again, no disrespect. got going on um but it, it was difficult to give programs at at the apv right you know uh, and i i had to move into osceola a little bit more to help more people we we couldn't stay out there and survive they were just sorry i have to apologize i my mama calling <laughs> um so i i I know that there are some serious needs out here, bro, and to to the point where I so uh, and, and you are too, you know. Like I said, we, we, this is a good fit for us, bro. Good yeah. fit, right there. Everything that we want to do, uh, it, it's just an opportunity right now for us to do it, you know. And, and that that really rolls over to some of the things that I was telling you earlier this week about our current climate, right? You know, we, we, we have to, we're very big in what we want to do for these young people out here. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's, it's, it's my dream, it's my goal, my organization's goal is to build as many student athletes as possible um, because we have talented kids in this area, right? So I want to build student athletes to the point where these athletes can go anywhere. Uh, and we're talking the top five schools uh, all, all the way down. We, we, want, we want every kid that comes in contact with our organization to go to that next level. If they choose not to, hey, no problem. But you're going to be prepared for it. You know what I'm saying? Right, <laughs> so right. that's what we're trying to do. And so in, in preparing our kids for that next level with our current climate, Man, next level's tough. Yeah. Right. You know, we we now need to add some additional things in here. You know, um, I I've had several conversations this week with people. Um, we're 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 involved in a couple of different organizations that are trying to do some things for the community, mm -hmm. and having conversations there as well. Um, but if people don't start listening. We, we're going to be in trouble, right? We got to start listening, right? And so the, the one thing I want people to listen to, what, what I say is, man, we, we have to sit, spend some time and focus on correcting these problems, not only in the court system, go out and vote, doing that, but the other part that we need to correct is our children, right? The, we, we work with the youth, right? And one of the things that I always say is, if we're going to work with the youth, that's our future, right? So if we're we're trying to change our future, then that's where we should be looking, right? So uh, one of the things that I'm I'm really adjusted in how we are communicating with the kids, and how we are trying to help my kids, especially get to this next level, is yo, you have to be safe out here, right? Not not just to predators or uh, the evils out here. You just got to be safe overall, man. There's all kinds of stuff going out here. And, and, you know, I'm raising, like I said, three kids and all all teenagers, right? I got I got two 13-year-old girls that I worry about often. But, man, I got a 6'4", 16-year-old boy that I worry about the most, you know? And, and there, there's so many things that 
can occur right now that could end all of his dreams and that he's not even aware of or not even um, prepared for right. at this time, right? right? And, and it, it's difficult for me to watch uh, you know, forgetting about the peaceful part of these protests and doing a little bit something more than they shouldn't. You know, I saw a text going out from one of my players about, yo, let's meet at the Florida Mall and we're going to do smash and grabs at the Florida Mall. The fact that those kind of text messages are going out to the kids that I know right. means they're going out to a whole bunch of kids. Right? right? So, Again, that's where we need to start stepping up and having conversations with these young men, these young these young ladies. I'm not leaving them out because they're them too. They they need to understand that uh, the, they're serious out here in these streets. And you you not only should you be careful, but one of the main things I want to say is you guys need to start being respectful, and I, that would eliminate a lot of problems, right? And some sometimes. I'm going to say this, and, and please take it with a grain of salt. Sometimes we 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 tend to escalate. We tend to escalate situations when we don't need to, Correct. right? And as adults, we know how to. All right, you know, we can read some another adult. Mm -hmm. If you're getting that vibe, that negative vibe back from somebody, and you're in conversation, you as an adult, you know how that conversation should go. Right. You know, if, all right, you know, let me step back out of this. You know what? All right, Al, it was nice talking to you. I'll talk to you later. You know, you know how to de de-escalate it. Right? Right. right. When you're 13, 14, 15 years old, you're not necessarily well versed in de-escalation. Right. So that means you need to be respectful. Right. Meaning, you know, yes, sir. No, sir. No problem. Yeah, I'll roll over. Yes, I'll put my hands behind my back. Yo, when we done with that, if everything is good to go, we go our separate ways. Yeah. If it ain't good to go, let's deal with it where we can deal with it. Yeah. Right there at that time, that's not a winning situation, right? Yeah. It, it, you know, when you get pulled over, you know, I, I'm going deep here, man. I, I know I shouldn't, but I'm going to go a little deep here. here. Yo, yo, when you get pulled over, right, yeah. that situation can go either way, right? Not, I'm not even saying pulled over. When you're stopped by an authoritative figure, yeah. how about that? If you're stopped by an authoritative figure, man, it could be a teacher at, in the hallway at class and you ain't supposed to be in the hallway, right. a, a hall monitor, uh, uh, anybody, anybody of authority stops a child. The first thing you need to be is respectful. Because it can go two ways, right? The positive way or the negative way. Every situation can. And really, at this at this point, at this stage, man, let's stop going the negative way. Let's just get just just get out of the situation. You know what I'm saying? If it goes bad, instead of thinking it's going to always be bad, and and conversation in a negative manner, you know, hey man, what you pulling me over? And why, why you questioning me? Why I got to show you this? Hey, man, if ain't nothing wrong, yo, here you go. Check this out. You feel me? Everything's done, right? I'm all good, officer. Thank you. Have a good day. Right? You can keep it moving. It's a lot easier to keep it moving than it is for now you being aggressive, and now he's responding to your aggression with some grown folk aggression, because that's what that is. And, and that's the thing I try to tell my son is, what you do at the schoolyard with your homeboys is not what you're going to do with a man of authority or a woman of authority, right? You ain't going to be able to talk to your, to your homeboy. No, I'm, I'll take it back. You're not going to be able to talk to that authority figure like you talk to your homeboys, all right? And I, and I try to tell him that in that manner so he understands that, yo, that adult is not your homeboy. Treat them with respect, right, regardless of anything else. So if you can get past that portion and just treat that person with respect, now you can eliminate that whole evil part, that whole negative part. Because most of the time, all those people do, all the authoritative person wants, that officer wants, is some respect. Yo, they're talking to you in a respectful manner. You, re you respond in a respectful manner. Trust me, you will get out of that situation, right? And, and the, the thing I tell 
See, my son is a little bit of a hardhead. Sorry, I know I shouldn't put this out here, but so his comment about it, a lot of things, it strikes me as funny because I know that's what a lot of kids these days think. Right. And their whole thought pattern of, you know, I, I, I don't know, like almost like the manhood is challenged, yeah. you know, almost like it, it's a, it's a, this, this police officer is trying to punk me. Right. And, and right. It, you know, stop worrying about your manhood out here in these streets, man. Don't nobody care about your manhood in these streets. Trust right. me. There's a whole bunch of cats out here talking about how bad they are. There's only a few of them actually being bad. All right. So that, that off rip, I, I, I tell every one of my kids, man, don't talk about it, be about it. And, and if you are truly uh, calling yourself an adult, calling yourself mature enough to handle yourself, then you need to understand some of these things that we putting down. Yeah. Right. And it, and it just is what it is because it, it's worrisome, bro. It's, it's worrisome. And, and you know, I, I have tons of friends that keep telling me, you know, Anthony, you know, not all police officers are bad, man. You shouldn't think that way. I, and I don't. I don't. I know. I know lots of police officers. I'm friends with plenty. Yeah. However, my, my biggest problem with it is if, if we tell you something's wrong, don't tell me something ain't. Wow. If we see all over the news that there's an issue, don't say, you know, that's... It, it's so limited, you don't know nothing about it. No, you, you guys are sensationalizing it. Yo, man, in all actuality, it should just never happen, right? Mm -hmm. And so even if that 1% happens, it's a problem in my book. Wow. It just is what it is. I mean, and, and I, I, I say it often, if I tell you there's a problem, I, I'll even go a step further. And I, I said this earlier this week, and people laughed at me, but... I'm a, I, if I get pulled over and it's unjust, I'm going to do what I'm told to do. Right? But the next morning, when I take off of work, I put on my slacks, my fresh tie, my shirt. I go down to IED and I tell them that I was roughed up. I was treated unjustly. Don't just put another piece of paper in that file. Yeah. Figure it out, man. See if it's investigate yeah. see see if i'm telling the truth because you know I, i'm 50 years old bro yeah. i'm not gonna waste my time going down to the police station to file a complaint and ain't nothing happened right. so uh, uh, that's the only thing i ask for on the other side if you want that respect for me trust me if something goes wrong and we want to deal with it appropriately mm -hmm. i expect you to help me deal with it appropriately right, right. plain and simple yeah, no, nah, I, 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 I completely agree with that, man. I think, I know, when I was working in juvenile detention center, man, these kids were always so, they got to be the big macho of the, of, the, of the center. They got to run the mod and stuff like that. And I was telling them, like, man, all of this stuff, all this cred, this cred, street cred that you want, whatever it is to be, is not worth it, especially at your young age. Like, you got so much ahead of you to do in life. So don't, there's no point of having all that. I used to, I used to have some heart to heart with them kids. And I'll get through to them because they'll be with me for about 21 days or a month. But, you know, those who kind of came in for 10 days, five days, it's hard to break through them because they'll go right back out right. and then they'll get right back in trouble. And then I see them right back in here. I'm like, dang, I just right. told you, like, I just seen you. Like, don't you get tired of this? Don't you get tired of, you know what I'm saying? Like, life humbling you and life teaching you what, what's wrong. But, you know, it's only so much uh, uh, one, you know, one person, one man can do. So that's why I think like us coming together and connecting and all the organizations like yours, why it's needed yep. because we can we can reach out to multiple kids than just me doing it alone or me doing it alone here in one city and then some other person in another city, one person doing their like we can all just come together and just attack attack for all the type of you different types you can get to. So, but yeah, yeah, that you you you're right on point with that, right, man? You 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 have to have that time, right? That yeah, there's that there. So I, there's a statistic that I talk about often is that in the '60s, in the '50s, '60s, and '70s, man, there were 
I think I think the figure was seventy five, no, eighty eighty percent two parent households. All right. Now today that's flipped, and uh, and that problem is because that 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 causes a problem because that shows that these kids don't have the support system that's needed. Wow. Right. And again, single moms out there are getting it in. I'm not talking bad. I'm not saying nothing bad about single parents at all. Not at all. Mm -hmm. But trust me, I know it's hard. Right. And you need some help every now and then, right? And that's what organizations like Teach Them Younger, that's a gentleman like AC, like myself, that's what we're trying to do out here. We're trying to help these kids be something, right? And and even though you doing your best, yo, just let me help you a little bit and get and help along. Trust me, I'm not trying to do nothing to hurt these kids. I'm trying to do nothing but help them. Right. Make them hey man, if we don't do it, somebody else will. All right. Right. Correct. And and that's the thing I say more than anything else. If if I don't pass down the knowledge that I have to some of these young people out here, mm -hmm. the Internet's going to teach them or somebody else you don't want to teach them. Yeah. Or they're going to be out there on their own trying to find the information. Yeah. Right. The difference today is kids today have information at the touch of uh, all they got to do is pick this phone up. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and that's all it takes. Matter of fact, you ain't got to touch nothing nowadays. You know, Okay, Siri. Okay, yeah. Google. Right? <laughs> you don't even touch nothing to get information now. Right? So, so they, they, if you're not teaching them and, and giving guidance, they're going to go look for it. And they might find it on their own. And it might not be what you want them to know. It might not be what the direction you believe. It might not be the value system you believe in. But, but it was the number one uh, hit on Google. So that's what they're going with. Or it's what somebody said in Wikipedia. Right. So that's what they're riding with. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be careful nowadays. And, and you have to start. And, and I almost implore parents to, to understand that you have to start stepping your game up. Mm -hmm. the, these days are, are different times, man. And these kids need us. They need us more than ever. Because yeah. there, there's some evils out here. And, and, and there's a lot of pitfalls. And, and there's quicksand and there's everything out here, all kinds of roadblocks for these kids uh, to, to stop them from getting to their dreams. Uh, and, and it happens often. Man, it happens with their peers, right? right? It, 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 it's, not, it's not even as easy as just saying, you know, people just don't like you. No, nah, man, your, own, your homeboys don't want you to do better than them sometimes. Sure, sure. You know, you really gotta check your circle. Really? You know, check your circle. Yeah. Now, nah, a lot of people don't get that. I mean, and that's why, like, when people, I mean, I'm, I'm good with a lot of people. My circle is very small, though. Like, my real circle, people don't even know, like, what my circle really is. It's probably a number, of, like, seven, you know, so I don't, I don't, a lot of people have one number, but that number gets turned off. And you can't find me because, I, you know, there's certain things that I do because my circle's so small, and it's because a lot of the moves that I make, I know a lot of people don't, some people don't like, the, I, I say my friends, but my associates may be in cahoots with someone who's going up against me or someone who doesn't like what I got going on. So I don't always tell all my plans and tell all my dreams and tell everything I got going on because it's always somebody, the thing that you're praying for, somebody's praying to be against that. So I always, you know, keep my circle very small and only really speak to a number of people until, and I don't, I don't share anything until I either overcame it or I already get set in stone and you can't demolish it. Whatever it is. So you said something, keep your circle small is key. Sure. I'm, I'm, I'm all in on that, bro. You know, and. and it's unfortunate that you have to be guarded that way, yeah. right? But, yeah. but um, this this is again one of the things that I I hope to change, right? Mm. We because to move forward, we're going to have to do more collaborative projects. For sure. People are going to have to start dropping some of these walls to create these changes. For sure. You know, uh, I again listening, you you can't listen, you can't heal if you're not listening. Right. You can't move forward if you're not listening. Right. You got to deal with the past, deal with it, and then now move and live in the present. And, yeah. and, and we, we can't do that because a lot of people are just denying it. And, and that denial is killing us right now. Bro. Right. 
is killing us. All right, now you're yeah. um, I, I'll tell you, uh, I, I, I can talk all day when it comes to this, bro. I, because yeah. <laughs> I, I come from a, a weird background. You know, um, I, uh, my, my grandmother was um, very heavy in the NAACP. Uh, I mean, yeah. National Secretary of AWCP, she was heavy. My mom, my uncles, they were all in the Black Panthers growing up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I grew up between Jersey, uh, Central Jersey, and Oakland, California. That th Those are my lifestyle. Yeah. And being between those two spots, being raised by strong, strong people who are very socially conscious, mm -hmm. uh, very aware of... Uh, everything that was going on around us. I mean, everything, man. I remember as a child being up on game yeah. um, because my mom was so serious about making sure that uh, I grew up to be this strong black man and, and be proud of it. And so my mom was really um, pushing me to be more than just another statistic, you know? And I, the knowledge that I bring to the table is a little different because I, I, some of this I don't know if I should be saying, but <laughs> I might want to keep some of this for my memoirs. But, yeah. um, but you know, I, I come from a background that's athletic saved me. Yeah. Athletic saved me, mm -hmm. right? Basketball saved me, and no, no doubt. Mm -hmm. And and my love of basketball, and my mentors, mm -hmm. and my coaches, uh, all of that saved me. You know, I, will, I was on that fast path going in the wrong direction. I can't front. I won't lie to you. I'll tell you. And, and you, a lot of people can't believe that, you know, I turned life around. I can tell you some of these people are watching right now yeah. are looking at and listening going, man, I remember this guy right here was a, a trip in high school. Yeah. <laughs> I remember this guy right here. Wow. How is he working with kids? Wow. Right? How, there's no way I would put my son with him. The cat that I knew 30 years ago, no way, yeah. you know? So uh, uh, I know that growth can occur. Mm -hmm. and, and I know growth can occur just within myself, man. I've grown so much in these last five or six years. That's just ridiculous. And yeah. so what I'm trying to do is lead by example. Mm -hmm. Show these cats that I'm serious about it. When I tell these guys that, yo, I'm in your corner, yo, don't worry about um, if you need me, if, if something's wrong, if you, you're having trouble in school, if you, you got a teacher that's uh, you're not vibing with, give me a call. Let me see what I can do. I, I got kids that call me all hours of the day, text me. Uh, people understand and believe me when I tell you I got your back. Yeah. And, and that's, that's, to me, is satisfying in itself. You know, and, and I'm hoping that with continually doing the things that I'm doing out here in the community, the work you and I are doing, the work you you and myself and my wife are going to be doing going yeah. forward, um, the help that we're getting from other organizations, the work we're doing in other groups. I'm hoping just all of that stuff just continues to add to my legacy so I can leave this place knowing that I try my hardest to make this a better place for my kids, make this a better place for other people that are around me, my circle, my family. Um, that That's all I'm about, man. Uh, and that's the realest talk ever. Uh, yeah, nah, uh, that's 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 a that's why that's why I rock with you the long way, man. Cause it's I mean <laughs> the same story, the same story as you got. Like I mean, a lot of people know me as just being like the class clown, and in high school, you know, back in the day, just being just being an athlete. You know, I was just very fast, running track, playing football, and no one would have ever thought. I'll be running for mayor, or I have four college degrees. Like every, you know, none of that was ever thought of, of me um, at, a, at a at a teenage age. I would say, you know, at a teenage age. So, you know, I right. I strongly believe in growth, and I oh, that's why I, now that's why I kind of always give the young people like a chance. Like whenever they do anything out of what I seen them do, when they were when I was teaching them in the camps and stuff like that. Any type of growth, like I just honor, like man, keep doing it, man. That's that's dope, man. Congratulations, like I I I hook them up because if you don't, they're always gonna believe like they're not gonna be no good or they're not gonna be whatever. So it's like that's what I, I do. What I do. That wasn't done for me at a young age. Like I didn't. 
the only people who was like inspiration by my parents, but I'm talking about like outside. Like if it wasn't sports, if it wasn't uh, track, it wasn't nobody inspired me to do what I wanted to be like art or anything like that. Like it was, it was that was me self talk self motivation stuff like that. Yeah. But I would, but, uh, if I had like a multitude of people like, yeah, man, keep going, keep like a team rooting for you. That's it's key. It's, it's, it's it feels good for 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 to have a team behind you. You know what I'm saying? So. That's why I always do what I do for the kids. Like, I be upping them up, like, yeah, like, I'm your biggest fan, you know, stuff like that, because it's needed. It's needed, man. Yeah. The, the team aspect, the team aspect actually circumvents sports. Right. And, and that, that whole, even if you never played sports before, the understanding of teamwork and, right. and collaboration, you, you have to learn. You know, that's an everyday thing. And so to just being a part of athletics and being a part of team and having coaches, that just adds that, that level of enrichment to every kid. And I, I, I strongly believe in it, man. It, it's again, it saved me. It saved, it saves many, you know, yeah. it saves many, you, you know, and, and that's where, that's where this whole project, this whole organization stems from, you know, uh, again, I grew up in midnight basketball. I grew up in after school basketball leagues. I, I go into the gym at midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, so you weren't getting in the middle of gang fights, you know, or, or using that as a safe haven because you knew something was going down. You know, I've been there, and that's that's the kind of vibe and that's the kind of location I want to provide this area, right? I, I think that Kissimmee needs that. You know, there's, there's no, uh, there, again, there's, there's places that you can go. I'm not saying that there, there's places you can go. There's, there's rec centers, there's community centers, there's, there's areas that people are providing services for people. However, I don't think anybody's providing services that we got. Right. Right. Plain and simple. Right. And, and you know, I, I, I ride with what we do. I ride with our brand. I, 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 I am serious about it and I think that every kid and every parent that rocks with us will tell you that you know and, and that's why we are growing tremendously and one of the things we we laugh about um is you know a lot of coaches in this area don't really know me right and right. it doesn't bother me I I I hope to eventually meet them. I hope to eventually tell them all I'm trying to do is help their kids or whatever. And eventually we'll start to connect and we'll start to uh, vibe on different levels. But right now, a lot of coaches feel me as a threat. Yeah. And there's no reason to, right? right. Uh, I'm not trying to take no kids from any organizations. Um, I'm not trying to poach kids from different teams. That's not what I do, man. I, what I'm trying to do is help, you know, and and providing a space, uh, inexpensive training, uh, opportunities for kids, mm -hmm. you can take that and go wherever you want. <laughs> I really don't care. I just want to know that um, I was able to help a little bit. Yeah. And so if we can provide location, if we can get this funding together and get this building, uh, I'm, again, I'm trying to keep the building on, open as long as I can, mm -hmm. uh, as many nights a week as I can, uh, just so kids in our communities understand that we are there for them. We got their back. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. And also, like, you know, before before we, we go, two things before we go. Um, what are, you know, because we're talking about all the services we're doing, we're talking about how we are, who we are, what we do, but what are the barriers that, you know, that, that you have came up against and Kissimmee and Osceola County of trying to do all the services that we're trying to do. Like what are the barriers and how can, how can the people that's watching, how can they help, you know, teach them younger, achieve those goals that we're trying, that we're trying to get to. All right. Um, all right. So right, right now we are in the pro well, we've been in the process mm -hmm. since the pandemic hit uh, of getting a hard structure, our, our own teach them younger building. Uh, where we can provide uh, the programs that we want to offer. We have, we've basically developed a catalog of programs uh, to offer the community, uh, ranging from uh, fine arts programs, painting, 
uh, crafts, uh, photography, digital uh, media projects. Uh, we we want to dive into social media. Alvin's got a great program that I can't wait to get a location yeah. to really teach because it's needed. And that's about the uh, the internet misusage. Yeah. The, 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 and to me, that that's something that teens we got we got to get a hold of. Uh, that that's something that we got to get out there immediately uh, because these kids today on these phones, man, they wilding out. Sure. Uh, they they don't they 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 need to understand what these phones are used for, mm -hmm. uh, and they need to understand that these phones, you know, some of these posts, especially nowadays with the climate that's real tight right now, yeah. some of these posts that some of these kids are making right now, they need to be careful because colleges, <laughs> jobs, yeah. they might come back and revisit some of this social media. Sure and so that, that class is one of the classes that we wanna offer. I wanna get out soon. Yeah. Um, we also, again, all our athletic programs, we offer training for pretty much all sports. Uh, we have football specific, soccer, uh, we track and field, basketball, of course. Uh, we have a couple of guys that we work with on a regular basis in our athletic department that are trainers in this area, um, that are coaches in this area. We have parents that have volunteered time and offered their services to teach classes. They want to offer their services and teach skills to kids that they know and love their passions, which is unbelievable. We have some professional photographers that want to get down and want to show and want to help kids understand photography. Uh, we actually even want to dive into culinary arts and, and helping to build businesses on that level, um, even food trucks and food carts. Uh, we want to start with kids uh, learning how to do just like even entry-level jobs and certifications uh, so we can pair up with uh, some of the businesses down the 190, 192 corridor and, and help some of these kids that are 16, 17 get some after school jobs or summer jobs, working in culinary arts, um, doing uh, line cook, prep cook, doing that stuff. Uh, we really want to get into that as well. Uh, we have lots of parents that offer their time and, and want to volunteer to help support that. Um, really, right now, I, I need help with spreading this. You know, I, I need people to uh, take a look at what we have going on, look at our track record. Look at how we run things and support us. Uh, uh, we have a nice following of people. Uh, we do well on social media. Uh, we have a couple of different groups that we work with on social media. So we please join our Teach Them Younger Village. Uh, our village, we have a thousand or so parents or citizens, uh, people all over the country that are there, um, dropping in information, uh, providing support. Uh, anytime that I need, I always just reach out to my village and somebody will raise their hand and offer support, which is awesome. Uh, I, I, I really want to work towards getting our building. So we started before the pandemic. Uh, we've been going on trying to get it. We've been working with county leaders, city leaders to uh, try to find a location, try to fit within the code standards because what we're trying to do is a little bit different than most organizations uh, by adding uh, that school portion where we're providing that virtual support that, that becomes a little tougher than just saying that we're training kids. Um, so we, we have a, a couple of different hoops that we have to jump through, but we're jumping through them because we need to make this happen. Uh, we, we are fooling around looking at uh, public funding, but uh, after speaking with some new people that I'm meeting, thank you, AC, again, for introductions to some folks. Uh, uh, we, we are looking to privatize this and try to do something a little bit uh, different, right? Since we have some people in the area that are just as uh, conscious and just as knowing that this is needed in our community, um, they're willing to help. And uh, not everybody has deep pockets, but everybody got pockets. So if, if you can help in any way, that's awesome. And, you know, uh, we, we, this is grassroots. This, we haven't had many grants. We actually, we haven't had any public grants. Everything that we've done for this community has all been through private donations. Uh, we worked with 
Publix and we used to sit out in front of Publix and give out our literature and uh, invite people to our classes and try to get them involved and uh, people donated there. We had people come to our website, just look and donate, make donations. Lots of friends from online. Uh, when we do social media campaigns, they're all involved. Um, but really, uh, we're, we're looking for sponsorships, donations, help in any way financially. Uh, In-kind donations are awesome because we definitely put that stuff to use. Uh, I want to thank some of the, the organizations that have helped us in the past. You know, Restaurant Depot helped us. Uh, uh, which is awesome. Gatorade, Pepsi, they helped us with some events, um, su supplying Toho water, supply water, Gatorades for us when we do our, our programs. Um, those, all those in-kind donations are awesome. They help tremendously. Uh, and we have other organizations. Um, it, it's, it takes a village, right? I mean, it takes a village. I, I'm not going to stop because we ain't got the financial backing. I'm going to be here as much as I can to help. It don't cost no money to spend some time with some kids. And, and I think I, I shock people when saying that, because if you know me from the past, you know, I, I'm, I, I, I'm a 70 an hour a week guy. You know, I worked in IT for 20 years. Uh, I wasn't trying to really do much but help my family, right? But the, in the change in, in my growth, it made me realize that helping other people is even more fulfilling. And so in my, uh, that's why I feel comfortable with charging people $15 for a week. Yo, $5 an hour. If you don't think your child is worth $5 an hour, come on, man. Come on. You, 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 you're doing them a disservice. So if I'm willing to give my time for $5 an hour, you know, some, some of you guys out here can help just a little bit more as well. You know, uh, I, I'm not going to lie to you. My mom... My mom, my wife, my kids, they were not happy when I gave up IT because that meant they had to cut back. <laughs> and I respect them. I love them to death. You know, they made sacrifices in our family um, so we can provide support for the community. And um, I have to give them credit where credit is due. So that, there you go, man. I, I said a whole bunch in that little question. Cool. <laughs> no, no, thank you. Thank you for that. So, uh... You know, lastly, also just tell tell the people where um, they can follow you, follow the page, and uh, also the website of where they can find out more information uh, for teaching young adults. Yes, uh, we're all over social media. You can you can search us, teach them younger, teach them younger, all one word. Um, our website www.teachthemyounger.org. Uh, we have uh, our basketball program has its own website as well with, with all of our programs there. And that's TTY Hoops Club. Uh, we, we are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Follow us. Uh, we try to stay active as possible, especially with trying to showcase our kids as much as possible. Um, I, you can go back in our history uh, pretty much every Saturday. I have two or three people around the gym filming, uh, taking pictures. Uh, we want our kids to feel like people care. We want people to feel like kids. So we try to put, um, we try to showcase our kids on social media as much as possible. So um, st keep an eye out for them. I got a new social media team where we got a bunch of kids from our group that are our social media team and they, they start working. Uh, my daughters love making their little videos. Yo, you know, TikTok, TikTok is making a whole bunch of movie producers yeah. dreams out there. Yeah. <laughs> All these kids want to make videos nowadays. Yeah. So um, we, we try to keep them going uh, with our stuff as well. Um, so uh, all you guys out there thinking that all of our stuff is done professionally, it's not. Uh, we, showcase, we showcase all of our kids' talents. So uh, a lot of the videos, uh, pictures, images um, that you see throughout Teach Them Younger, our web pages, our social media, that the majority of that comes from our kids, our kids in our programs. Um, so, uh, and we were going to continue on with that. That's what we want to do. We want to continue. Uh, AC and I, we talk um, about once we get our location, the majority of the decoration and the the 
atmosphere in that building itself will all come from these community kids. Mm -hmm. Everything. Everything. I, I, I want everything that they... I, I, I want to create portfolios for them, but I want their living portfolios to be all throughout our location. So at any given time, they can come back and say, hey, man, look, I did that. Right. You know, I want to be the place that, that holds a famous artist's first painting. I want to be the place that holds a kid's first drawing at, that is a superstar in the NFL next year, at one year. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 that's what I want to teach some younger to be. That's what I want our Merits Academy to be. Um, I, and I think that this is the perfect opportunity for all of this to happen um, because it's needed right now. It's right now it's needed. Um, yeah, I'm a big you finishing up, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I gotta get this this jersey done, but it's all good. But um, man, listen, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Uh, thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for sharing info about you know teach them younger. I'm excited for teach them younger. I'm excited. I've always been. You know, he knows that, but I'm letting y'all that I am excited. Like I'm behind this organization. I can vouch for this organization. Uh, me personally, Alvin Conrad AC. You know, I don't like. I don't really vouch for a lot of things, publicly. <laughs> so, um, but nah, it's all love. So, uh, make sure you follow him. Make sure you follow Teach Him Younger. Um, the next Art and Talk show is gonna be Monday. I'm taking a day off to uh, spend time with my family, uh, my parents. So, much love to everyone. Yeah. Uh, hey, yo, AC, man, before yeah. you go, man, I just want to say one thing, man. Mm -hmm. Yo, man, the, the, these things right here that you're doing are awesome, right? And, and I want to encourage you to continue on and doing them. Right. Yo, man, uh, it's nothing but love come from me, my family. Everybody that I know that I put on to you, they've said the same thing, man. This is a good dude. And so I, I want to tell you, man, uh, I'm very proud of you, brother. Right. I'm very proud of all the things that you're doing, and not only in this, this community, mm -hmm. but you're going worldwide. And, and I'm, I'm happy to be on your coattails. I'm happy to be down with you. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe in you wholeheartedly, brother. And continue to do good work out here, man. man. Thank you, man. It means a lot. I really do appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. You love it. So, um, so yeah, everyone, man, I'll catch y'all on Monday. Peace and positivity. Love. Be grateful. And um, share this when you can. All right. Peace and blessings. Thank you, brother.